the brochure asked, can a belligerent foreign policy lead to stability in the world like we've never tried that before? In fact, the world is in chaos precisely because of a belligerent foreign policy. And sometimes the belligerents are mad, like Donald Trump, bad, like Tony Blair, imbecilic, like George W. Bush. Uh, but they were all exponents of and practitioners of a belligerent foreign policy. And the results are there for all to see. The question seems premised on the assumption that uh, we have had a non-belligerent foreign policy at any point uh, in modern history. In fact, since the United States was born, it has been at war all but one year, all but one year in its entire lifetime. And the last time Britain had no soldiers fighting abroad, and only briefly, uh, was in 1779. So we have had not just a lifetime of, but uh, centuries of foreign policy belligerence. And it doesn't flow from any psychopathic character uh, necessarily, although some, like Richard Nixon, in his belligerent foreign policy, was undoubtedly psychopathic, like his foreign policy guru, seems to have been the guru to many, including the aforementioned Tony Blair, Henry Kissinger, were undoubtedly psychopathic. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily require that. It requires a view of the world that the rich and powerful have the right to dictate to the less rich and less powerful, that the people who can do, if you can conquer other people's countries in the past, or conquer their economic uh, reality, if not their territory, as happens more often nowadays, if you can, you do. Uh, and that's why we have chaos and violence and the threat of truly unbelievable levels of violence uh, in front of us today. You ask, Marianne, uh, about Trump and his foreign policy. Let's review it. Trump has unilaterally withdrawn from the Iran nuclear deal, signed Solomon binding uh, by his predecessor, and the permanent five plus one and the Islamic Republic of Iran, and impeccably, I'm using the words of the IAEA, impeccably observed by Iran. Trump has unilaterally withdrawn from it, begun a raft of ever deep and punishing economic sanctions against Iran, and yesterday, a major terrorist atrocity was carried out by Saudi-sponsored, which means American-sponsored, terrorists in Awaz in Iran, which killed 26 people now, not just soldiers, but old soldiers, paraplegic soldiers, members of the public in the crowd, and journalists covering the event we are headed potentially to cataclysmic conflict. Again, in the Middle East, what could possibly go wrong? Iran will undoubtedly respond extremely violently against Saudi Arabia at any minute, certainly not long delayed. That will beget a response and so the spiral towards war uh, will twist. Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of State, the former head of the CIO, CIA, this uh, week threatened actions against Venezuela. They've already got sanctions, almost uncountable number of them. Now it's U.S. 
actions against Venezuela that we can expect uh, in the next few days. And the elephant in the room, uh, the morass of the Syrian war, some of you know me from my stand against the Iraq war, I'm here to tell you that the involvement of Western countries in the Syrian war is the worst thing we have ever done, i.e. worse than Libya, worse than Iraq. Our belligerent foreign policy of arming, financing, propagandizing for ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and the alphabet soup of Islamist fanaticism in Syria is the worst thing that we have ever done. And notwithstanding that the war is almost over, we may very well be about to double down, to double our bets on the catastrophic conflict in Syria. So can a belligerent foreign policy bring about peace and stability in the world? Not bloody likely. <laughs> For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.